Strange Fire. We're going to finish that lecture today. And remember this, our Father is a consuming fire. His Holy Spirit warms your heart. It protects you. And you can totally, His promise is that you can feel at ease under His uh, fire. That's the Holy Spirit. But at the same time, uh, if you cross Him, that uh, consuming fire can consume you. So naturally, in as much as He is not only a consuming fire, He's a jealous God. And He does not wish you to be warmed by somebody else's fire. You got that? It's just that simple, this message of strange fire. He said, don't mess around with strange fire. You stick with what you have been commanded and you stay with it. He can be rather severe as we have discussed so far. You have two bodies. You have, um, and with these bodies, the first one is a flesh body. It can die. Your spiritual body can only die at, by one source and one source only. And that's by the consuming fire, which is our heavenly Father. Matthew chapter 10. I want to go there with a word of wisdom from our Father. It's where it speaks in this 10th chapter, uh, beginning with the 16th verse, I send you forth as sheep among wolves. Well, what, what, what chance does a sheep, have, a lamb, have among wolves? If the shepherd isn't there, not much. But the shepherd's always with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And he says, when you're delivered up, you won't take any thought beforehand what you will say because you're going to be there in verse 18 for a testimony for me, a testimony of truth. And naturally, this is when you're scourged before the synagogue of Satan. And he continues on and, and lets you know that it's not you that speak in verse 20, but the Holy Spirit. That's the consuming fire. That's Almighty God that comes straight from the altar of God. And therefore, people have the truth. But now, concerning life and death, resurrection, and, um, and uh, who can uh, harm a, a flesh body or a spiritual body, let's pick it up in verse 26, if we may, of chapter 10. And it reads, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. I'm going to make it known through my servants, those that are delivered up, those that the Holy Spirit, the consuming fire, can speak through. My ministers of fire, if you would. Psalms 104, if you, if you don't know what ministers of fire are. Verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. You bring it to light. And what you hear in the ear, if you've got ears to hear, that is, that preach ye on the housetops. Don't keep it secret. What I give you, I expect you to deliver, okay? I expect you to share. If you uh, hide all the truths of light, like a little old candle in your life under a bushel basket, God's not going to give you any more. You've had it. The only, he, he loves all of his children. He doesn't have favorites. And if he gives one of his children something, he expects them to share it. Verse 28, this is why we came here, sharpen up. And fear not them which kill the body, that's to say the flesh body, but are not able, I repeat, they are not able, never have been, never will be, they are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him, that's our heavenly father, revere him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now this word destroy again means, it doesn't mean partly, it, it, it's a pallion, the one we talked about earlier. It means total destruction, total consumption, totally consumed by the consuming fire. So, Get it straight in your mind. The only entity that can destroy your soul is Almighty God, your Father. Now, naturally, if He loves you and you're in good standing, what do you have to worry about? Because no one else can touch your permanent self, that's to say your soul. And His consuming fire warms that soul. Now, I would remind you again, when you think of fire, naturally fire that is 
produced by fuel, heat, and oxygen, when those three come together, you're going to have a fire at a, at a flash point. Okay? Well, that's not the kind of fire we're talking about. That will burn a flesh body. But when, when a spiritual body can walk through that same flame caused by those three elements, and it won't hurt it, won't bother it at all. And strange fire comes from those that would try to draw spiritual, the, a spiritual connotation from another source other than Almighty God. And that makes him jealous. And he can cause your soul to perish in hell. Many might, well, I, didn't, I thought they was in hell forever and ever. They are. When you're totally and completely destroyed in hell, that's just exactly where you'll remain. Gone. Blotted out. Never, to, never, never another thought. Annihilated. That's what apollyon means. So, there we have it. Now, there, there is um, another thing he, Jesus, in his teaching, gives us a little peek into. And that's Lazarus and the rich man. It is, it is a parable, but it's about two people that actually existed. But Jesus takes them even into paradise so you can see what it's like there. So that you can see what it's like in the spiritual body. Quite frankly, the, what I want you to see about it is even though the rich man was wicked and evil, he still lives and awaits judgment day. He's not dead. It's just the flesh that is dead. Bear in mind uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that very clearly teaches us concerning the two bodies that we possess. Okay, Now, uh, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, it's, it's a very important uh, parable concerning strange fire. Okay, And I will explain as we go. All right, Let's pick it up if we may. I, I want to tell you, the beggar, of course, was Lazarus. And the name Lazarus is the um, equivalent in the Hebrew of Eleazar, the third son of Aaron, meaning a Levitical priest. But there were two beggars in this parable. Lazarus begged on earth. The rich man begged in paradise. Okay? A lot of begging going on. That's why it's important that you pay attention so, let's pick it up if we may, Luke 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. I mean, he had it made. He had plenty of everything for everywhere, 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. And again, I remind you, uh, the priesthood of Eleazar, this is symbolic where it comes back into power, into being which was laid at his gate full of sores. What gate? What were he begged at? I mean, he was in bad shape. 21. And he desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. I mean, he, he was in bad shape. You can be in bad shape on earth, but have a precious reward laid up in heaven. Okay? That's what, in other words... Keep your ducks in a row as to where your priority should be. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. You see, Abraham himself was alive, though he died thousands of years before. A thousand years before. The rich man also died and was buried. In other words, he was still deader than a hammer spiritually. Now, don't, don't confuse. His flesh body died, yes. But his, his uh, resurrected soul still was mortal, meaning liable to die at judgment. And naturally, what has he got to overcome? Nothing. He's a goner, okay? Verse 23, And in hell, that's to say in the wrong side of paradise, waiting judgment, that's, that's where this particular hell is, okay? We'll document that here in a moment. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. 
Basanos. The old touchstone was getting to him. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. There was that little old beggar right there being loved and appreciated and blessed. And here this rich man was back over here in hell, tormented day and night, knowing he, it was over for him. 24. And he cried and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. The flame of what? The consuming fire. Seeing God's justice as it was being laid out in paradise. I mean, God divides them up. There is a difference. But I want you to remember one thing. Be intelligent. Think. Even though the rich man was in hell, he could still see heaven just across the way there. And he could see what was happening there. That's where part of the main torment was. And uh, we, we continue with the next verse, 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Now, uh, he could even communicate. You understand that? The rich man could even communicate with Abraham. And again, I would remind you, as we covered in the last, God is not the God of the dead, but the living, for all his children live in the spiritual body or flesh body. 26. And besides all this, between us, Abraham continues, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. In other words, the, the, the word in the Greek is chasmon. It comes from chasmon, which is an open, gapping wound. You can't come across it. Why? He didn't make it. He's still deader than a hammer spiritually. He's mortal. His soul is still mortal. Those he can communicate over there, their souls are immortal. Meaning they live forever. He is doomed. And he is awaiting that great judgment day. Nobody go, gets uh, consumed until judgment day and stands. They will have till the end of the millennium. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Let, 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 let him go there. I remember again, Lazarus is the equivalent in the Hebrew of Eleazar, which was the chief priest after the older two died playing around with strange fire. So don't you play around with strange fire. You serve a jealous father. He loves you, but he is very jealous. He said, send him, send him as a priest back to my family. 28. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Basinos, I don't want them to come here. 29. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. They've got the word of God to keep them out of this place. Let them read it, accept it, and, uh, and enjoy the love of God, and they'll make it just fine. And he said, the rich man again said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Well, you see, that's not true because Christ went to them from the dead. And we still have the same letter. And many still don't repent. So that's the way people are. And if they want to go to hell, hey, there's an open road. Verse 31, and he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And they, many were not. Though Christ defeated death, though Christ stamped death out, to, that we overcome death, 
in, at the great judgment of Almighty God, then it is written, the last thing into that lake of fire, or one of the last things, is death itself. Because the rest of us will have eternal life. So, what I want you to understand, Eleazar, Lazarus, the same, same name, okay, came back into blessings and communication whereby you can better understand strange fire. Now, where did strange fire start and how did, how did it come in? It was by, it was by uh, Eleazar's two older brothers, Nadab, which means liberal, and, and he was a liberal, and there was Abihu, which God is his father. These were the firstborn. They were the firstborn of, um, of uh, Aaron. And I mean were great priests. They were the, the head priest responsible for burning incense on the altar of God. Turn with me to Luke chapter 10. I'm sorry, Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10, Old Testament, under the, in the Pentateuch. We want chapter 10, and we're going to take it in verse 1. I want you to understand what happens when you play. We were given an example of the penalty you will pay for messing with strange fire. When you have the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, you better thank God you have it. And follow the path set forth in the parable by poor old Lazarus Eleazar, the high priest. For after this incident, Eleazar became the high priest. This is how it happened. Chapter 10, the great book of Leviticus, and verse 1. And Nadab, this is the liberal, okay? And Abihu, the sons of Aaron, firstborn, okay? Took either of them his censer. They waited around a little bit late, okay, to get down at the time of their turn. And they took their censers and put fire therein. Just let's, let's don't go to the eternal flame. Let's just put a little fire here off of the buffalo chip pile in our censers to run down there, okay? And put fire therein and put incense their own and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. Exodus chapter 30, uh, verse 9. Commanded them not. Don't you do it. Don't you burn incense to me with strange fire. I won't tolerate it. I won't have it. That, that is the equivalent of trying to be a priest of God with false doctrine, false teachings, misleading people. Instead of partaking of the consuming fire, the Holy Spirit the word, the letter. So what happened to them? Two. And there went out fire from the Lord. This is sure not strange fire. Fire went out from the Lord and devoured them. Consumed them. You got it? Consumed them. And they died before the Lord. He struck them dead. You know, when God appoints you to a high office, you better take it serious. Those he expect, when he gives much, he expects much, and you better produce. Verse 3, Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified, and Aaron held his peace. He kept his mouth shut. I mean, he just, he saw his two oldest sons just, I mean, they were high priests. Boom, gone. Playing around with the altar of God. Playing around with strange fire. You know, how could, with what God has done for us, how could anyone blaspheme him? How could anyone try to substitute uh, junk for that that is precious, the Word of God? How could anyone want to teach from 
rotten garbage books and rag sheets that man produces when you've got the Word of God and you can live in safety, enjoying the presence of Almighty God's comforting warmth, the consuming fire. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel real quickly. Book of Ezekiel. What happened to Satan? How did that happen in the first earth age? That uh, Satan, what is promised to him? I mean, surely if he would burn up those two uh, priests, uh, what would he promise Satan? Satan is the king of Tyrus. Uh, he, he is a cherubim, not a man born of woman. Tyrus in the Hebrew tongue, I'm just making this real quick for you, is rock. Or we could even say a strange fire because it's not of God. He, it, it is the false rock. Our rock is Christ, okay? Uh, Deuteron, uh, Ezekiel 28, verse uh, 11, and it reads, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Twelve son of men, take up a lamentation. That you sing a sad song upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. I created you to be the most beautiful of the cherubims and gave you full wisdom because you earned it. You were precious. 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. And boy, did he mess up there with even the rest. Every precious stone was thy covering. You were something to look at. The sardis, topaz, diamond, the beryl. Onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and gold. Of the workmanship of thy tabrets, of your drum, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. He wasn't born, he was created. So you know who we're talking about. We're not talking about the king of some little country, okay? We're talking about the cherubim that covereth. That's one of the cherubims at the end of the mercy seat. 14, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. You've seen the Ark of the Covenant. He's one of those that protected, or is supposed to, the mercy seat. And I have set thee so. I'm the one that put you there. You know, I can get a little jealous over that. I mean, God really blessed him. And, but being a servant, I know he earned it. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, of the consuming fire, the fire of God, the truth, the, the, the fire that enables, enlightens, that gives. God, the consuming fire. He was up there. 50. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till, until iniquity was found in thee. He stopped loving God. He was so beautiful, so great, had it all until he wanted to be God himself. He wanted to be the son, 16. But the multi by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. It's caused you trouble. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. You know, don't mess with God. God is somebody that loves you. That I mean, he will, go the, he will always see that you are given what you deserve. And by that, I mean, look what he did for Satan. Came full wisdom, and yet the old dummy uh, w was taken in by pride, self gratification. Uh, he di he didn't care about our father after he got so fancy, even though he earned it. You can't turn on he who passes out all gifts, whether they're gifts of teaching or whatever. Verse seventeen: Thine heart was lifted up. That means you got prideful. Because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. 
by reason of thy brightness, your splendor, it took you down. I will cast thee to the ground. That's the earth. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. I want them to take a good look at you. I want them to see you for what you really are. And he did cast him to the earth and, um, and removed him from the protecting cherub to one that is supposed to protect the mercy seat because which is which is for Messiah he wanted to be the Messiah himself he wanted to sit on it what is the penalty from the consuming fire strange fire no not strange fire 18 thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic therefore this is the sentence therefore Will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee? It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all men that behold thee. I'm going to, I'm going to do away with you. I'm going to blot you out. You're going to turn to ashes from within. We're not talking about a flesh body here. We're talking about a soul. It's disintegration, to perish. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe upon him and follow him should not perish, but have eternal life. This is the result of going the other way. To perish, ashes from within, forever and ever and ever. Once something is turned to ashes, it's over. That's a Hebraism that means fini. Verse 19, all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be any more. Forever and ever and ever. Gone. Okay, Ezekiel, the great book of Daniel in closing. What is it like to when God is with you and you're in the fire? You've heard me mention Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, Let's pick it up, if we may, with the 15th verse here of the third chapter of the great book of Daniel. And it reads, you know, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to a, a statue or a beast that was um, six by 60, giving you what you should do when you see the sixth vial, the sixth trump, and the uh, sixth seal all come together when 666, there's only one person that appears in the book of Revelation at the sixth uh, seal, sixth trump, and sixth vial. It's Satan, Apollyon, Babdon, whatever you want to call him, the destroyer. Verse 15, Now, and, and these three Hebrews were told to worship that statue, bow down to it. And Nebuchadnezzar loved him. And he says in the 15th verse of that third chapter, Now if you be ready that it may be time for you to hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, palm tree, dusselmer, and all kinds of music, all six of them, okay? You fall down and worship the image which I have made with, well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver thee out of my hands? I got some bad news for Nebuchadnezzar. 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. He's our, he's our father. 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Are you set for that when the false Messiah appears on this earth? Are you going to bow to him? Or are you going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He loved them, but now he hated, and you could see that hate. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Heat her up there, boy, seven times what's necessary. 
And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into that burning, fiery furnace. 21. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, everything, I mean, a full dress, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. What kind of fire we got going on here? 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Killed them dead in a hammer. 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Uh, there they went. Chunked in here. 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Uh, a stone, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men into the midst of the fire? Question. They answered and said unto him, to the king, True, O king, we put three in there, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. They're not bound. I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Why? Because it was the Son of God. God the consuming fire, who is able to protect you from the strange fire, anything that Satan wants to put up in smoke. The smoke, as it is written in Revelation chapter 9, that comes out of the pit with him, cannot harm you. When you stand as we started out in Matthew chapter 10, to witness with the Holy Spirit, the consuming fire, speaking through you as a minister of fire for Almighty God. You see, Nebuchadnezzar uh, closed his mouth on the... Uh, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. You know something? We're going to stop there. Their, their clothes weren't even singed. If you were to keep reading, they, you couldn't even smell smoke on them. Why? Because God, the consuming fire, protected them through the Son of God. And God is able to take care of his own. You will never find a better example of strange fire, of them trying to get them to worship strange fire. That's to say the image. And poor old Nebuchadnezzar was so very offended when they told him, our God, he, he can take us out of your hand anytime he wants to. And, and, and this is true in as much as no, no king or anyone can destroy your soul. It's indestructible, with the exception, as we read in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Almighty God, the consuming fire. So, the examples from the Word of God to mess around with strange fire is rather severe. Look what happened to the two elder sons of Aaron. And they were high priest, firstborn, best of the crop, only they weren't. They were lazy, like to take shortcuts. Anything will do. Just grab a few coals off that fire to get this incense started. We're late. Let's get down there and whoom, they're gone. Don't mess with God. Don't disobey his commandments when he gives you the responsibility, especially if it's some liturgical duty. Okay. Be ready to serve him. You know, it is so easy to please our father. All you have to do is try, and he gives you credit for being perfect, and you're sure not. I'm not. None of us are. But he gives us credit for it. You know, when you look back at Satan, when he started, he, he must have been really something. Because he earned all that. God gave it to him, and he wouldn't give it to him if it wasn't right. And then he fell. Don't ever get puffed up in yourself and think you're more than what you are, okay? Okay. You sure don't want to do that. It can be real painful. All right, strange fire. Why would you want that when you have God the consuming fire that loves, that comforts, 
that helps you in learning. It's a spiritual fire. And it is so wonderful. You see, it's part of your family. It's your father. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? Okay, question time. And we go with Diane from Georgia. What does a Christian need to do to receive the gift of interpreting tongues? Well, do you know what interpreting tongues is? Tongues in the Greek is languages. And before you can interpret a language, you've got to learn it. Therefore, what you need to do is, a lot of people are misinformed that they think that the Pentecostal tongue was unknown. That, the beauty of it was every language, there's, the word unknown is not connected with, um, with the, the Pentecost tongue of Acts chapter 2. The mystery was that every language that heard it understood, which is the, is the um, guarantee that the Holy Spirit is present. You can hear it in every language. Man can't fake that, okay? But the, to, to speak the tongue, say, of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, you have to learn that language and then say, if I were to go to Russia and you had learned how the Russian tongue, and if I were to teach the Russian people in English, you would have to interpret my sayings into Russian with the emphasis, that's the gift, is to be able to convert it in that language, but with the same emphasis, okay? So it takes a lot of work, all right? But it's, it's a fantastic gift. Uh, Yvette from New York, uh, does, uh, here's another about tongue. Does tongues mean another language or is it babbling? It means another language. Take your Strong's Concordance, take the word tongues, and the Greek definition will be, it is a language other than you were born with. It's one you have to learn. Uh, Dorothy from uh, Georgia, did the Geber have souls? Yes, they were born of woman. They had souls. And are there people today who don't have souls? All people have souls. That is, that is their, uh, I, I oversimplify by translating soul, self. It's yourself with whatever body you're in, whether you're in the spiritual body or whether you're in the flesh body, you're still the same self, okay? That is the, your soul. Uh, Susan from Virginia, where is it written in the Bible that Jesus was born on December the 25th? It isn't. He was born on September the 30th. The conception took place December the 25th, but that's fine. When Mary, on the day of the conception, December the 25th, she rushed over to her cousin Elizabeth, who was a daughter of Aaron, a Levitical priestess. And her husband was a full-blood uh, Levite, and he was a priest, meaning Mary's mother was of Levi and her father of Judah. Okay, But she ran over, and when she came up to Elizabeth on December the 25th, John was in her womb six months in pregnancy, and John leapt in her womb when he felt the approach of the Holy Spirit in the, the uh, pregnancy of Mary on the, at the very beginning, all right? So when did Christ begin to dwell with us? December the 25th, but it was the conception. Listen to my Christmas tape, my Christmas message, and I document that from the Word of God. It all hinges on the course of Abaya in which Zacharias, Elizabeth's husband, was teaching and serving at the time of, of the conception. Ralph from Louisiana. Was Satan released from bondage in the year 2000? No, absolutely not. Uh, when he is kicked out of heaven, you will know it. He will come saying he is Christ and most of the world will worship him. It'll be quite a shindig quite a revival, quite a church meeting. Mary from California, how do I anoint my house? Well, you anoint your house with the oil of our people, which is to say olive oil. You take pure olive oil from any grocery store, you pour a small portion apart in a small vial or bottle or whatever you may have, whatever kind of a container, and you ask our Father to bless it as anointing oil. 
And then you follow the custom as it was on Passover day when the blood of the lamb was placed on the door and the substitute is the oil of our people. You know what? You know what olive is in Hebrew? It's el yah. Do you know what el is in Hebrew? That's God. Do you know what yah is in Hebrew? That's our sacred name. That's God's sacred name. So you're saying God two times in oil, olive, okay? And and you ask him to bless it as anointing oil, and you put a bit on your finger, and you put it over the threshold, and in Jesus' name, order nothing um, evil to come across that threshold. And um, it isn't the oil that does it. It's your fate in obeying God to place it there, to anoint it. If it's sick, anoint it. If your marriage is sick, anoint it. If your home is sick, anoint it. James chapter 5, if a person is sick, anoint them. Uh, Helen from California. And many people are going to say, well, how does a Christian anoint? Why should a Christian believe in anointing? And, and how ignorant can, can Christians be? Do they not even know their Savior? Do they not know that Christos means the anointed one? And that the etymology of Christ comes from rubbing as anointing? And it is he is that has anoints us with the Holy Spirit? Really? Helen from California, how do you know what your purpose on earth is? Well, hey, you know this strange fire and the lecture before that that we did kind of let you know? You're going to be delivered up before the spurious Messiah. That's your purpose. That's the main purpose of God's elect that are born in this final generation is to stand against Satan. You did it once before, you're going to do it again. If that sounds a little deep, you put part of it on the shelf that you can't receive. It'll come to you. And God's elect will allow the Holy Spirit to speak through them. And many are going to say, well, I'm not a very good speaker. Don't worry, God is, and he'll speak through you. That's, that's all you have to worry about. You're not to premeditate what you will say before as it is written in Mark 13. Now, if you have eyes to see and hear that, you know what your duty is on earth. Do it. Study, prepare, be ready. Sandy from South Dakota. I have an 18-year-old son who I know believes in the Lord but is not a Christian. I've been praying for his salvation. My question is, how do I talk to him about coming to the Lord what scripture would be good for him to read? I can't get him to go to church because he says it's boring. Well, listen, I'll tell you what you do, Sandy. He's 18 years old. Tell him you think you're getting mixed up in a cult. And you'd like for him to listen to the Mark of the Beast tape to see if you're really getting in a cult, okay? That you'd, you'd like to have his opinion. And let, let him play that Mark of the Beast tape to document to you that it's false, okay? See what happens. It doesn't, you know, there is more than one way to plant a seed, okay? Just try it. See what happens. Um, <clears throat> this is, uh, my name, uh, Pastor Murray, my name is Rainey. I'm 11 years old, and I have two questions. My first question is, how, do, how did you learn so much about God? Well, well darling, by by studying and the more you study the more God will give you he gives you a lot of help and he really blesses you but um, uh, I've been teaching for over 50 years and you should you should begin to get it down pretty good after that okay it should come pretty easy my second question is when did you start teaching God's word well it would have been about mid 50s okay somewhere along mid 50s and and um, been going ever since laying it right on them centers Thanks, uh, Randy, Randy, and you keep studying. You're doing good, okay? Ashton from Washington. Well, here's another youngster. My name is Ashton. I am eight years old, and I have two questions. My first question is, how did Pharaoh's magicians turn their staffs into snakes like Moses did? Well, it was Aaron that turned the staff into a super serpent, but magicians can make things appear as they're really not and um, with magic but always remember Aaron's snake 
ate, swallowed the magicians, okay? Uh, God interceded, that's good. My second question is, how did your son, how did your sons become so good like you? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> no, they, you know, they study God's word. They, they've always been pretty good boys, and, and their old man uh, is an old Marine sergeant, and they believe, they practice discipline too, you know, but in a kind, loving way. It's just like all Marines are kind and loving, you know, that's the way it is. I'm, I'm happy with my sons. They do a good job, and I'm proud of them. I know God is. What might surprise a lot of people, I've never insisted that they follow in my footsteps as ministers. I've never insisted on what they should believe or not believe. It's all up to them. The reason being, God does the choosing, man doesn't. Not this man or any other man. Michelle from Texas, will heaven be brought to earth? Heaven's wherever God is, and when God comes to earth, heaven's going to be on earth, okay? It happens as it is written in Revelation chapter 21 and at the end of chapter 20 in Revelation. Ken from California. Where in Psalms does it say, delight thyself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart? It's uh, Psalms 37, 4. 37, 4. Just two Psalms before the great uh, acrostical Psalm of... Uh, why the, it seems the wicked always win. They don't. It's Nathan from California, do you believe in the Trinity? Well, how many times have you heard me say Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and Almighty God in this lecture? Do you know what God, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit consist of? How many times have you heard me say it and then you would ask me this? If you've ever listened to me, you hear me teach the, those three over and over and over. And then you would ask me, Shelby, do you, believe, do you believe in the Trinity, the Father, Almighty God, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit? Do you? Um, could you explain that to me so that all people could understand? That's wonderful. That's beautiful. Shelby from Kentucky. Where does the scripture say, spare the rod and spoil the child? Proverbs 13.24 is probably pretty well what you're shooting for there. Proverbs 13.24. Kathy from California. The subject of Eve eating the apple in the garden. Did the word apple come from Satan's name? And is the apple symbolic of uh, sexuality and fertility? No, it isn't. Where, where did you, Kathy, where did you find the word apple? in discussion with Eve? Where, where did you read that in the Bible? You would have to have a mighty strange Bible if you read apple in it, because it's not there. And um, um, so uh, Eve was seduced in the garden under fig trees because they made aprons of figs, not mask, because their sin wasn't from the mouth. It was from other parts. And um, the word apple is not even mentioned there. You've listened to too many Sunday school teachers that are misleading children, okay? Julie from Colorado. When the fallen angels come down and seduce women, how, how were they born if not of woman? You mean the fallen angels? Because they were created, okay? That's, that, was, that was their major sin, was as it is written in the book of Jude. They left their place of habitation, that is to say heaven, and came to earth to seduce woman not to be born of her. And that's why they, um, that destroyed God's plan whereby um, uh, a babe could not be born innocent not remembering all the things that happened in the first earth age to make its mind up whether it would follow God or Satan, okay? In innocency, that's important to our Father. Uh, Johnny from Arkansas, in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, is this like a one world government 
Would you please explain what these verses mean? Well, you haven't had the mark of the beast, the free mark of the beast tape, have you? Because I go into that beast real well. Anytime it's multi-headed, God doesn't create mon monsters like that, multi-headed, and that that is sim symbolic. And anytime it's multi-headed, it is governmental. And yes, it is governmental until verse four where the dragon, which is one of Satan's names, check it out, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, the dragon being one of the devil's names, and appeared and healed the wound that the governmental system received. And then in the 11th verse, he comes out over the one world government system in the middle of that period of temptation and becomes the spurious Messiah or false prophet, whichever you want to call him. It's all the same. Same office. And the whole thing has been shortened down now to a five-month period split in two with two-and-a-half-month um, segments. Okay, we got um, Sylvia from... Uh, I don't know where Sylvia is from. You know, though, don't you? Wisconsin. Okay, I'd like for you to simplify Job 40, 15 through 24 and Job 41, 1 through 24. Uh, so the, I have the companion Bible, but I still have a, a, a long, long way to understand. It's real simple. Um, in uh, in ch chapter 40, verse 15, the word is behemoth. And and it very definitely describes a dinosaur. It eats grass from the mountains, top of the mountains, and it has a tail like a cedar of Lebanon. Do you know how big a cedar of Lebanon is? Only a dinosaur, the dinosaur is the only creature God ever created that has a tail like that. And it's talking about the first earth age. And then your uh, misunderstanding of 41, 1 through 24 is Le Le Leviathan, which is the old crocodile of the Nile, which is symbolic of Satan in this earth age, okay? You can't hardly get a hook in him, all right? He's tough, and you better know that when you're doing business with, by, I mean, by that I mean running him out in the name of Christ. He's tough, and it is hard to get a hook in him, but, but we can do it. Uh, Pastor Murray, the 7,000 fallen angels that die in the arena uh, is that exactly 7,000 or will there be more? Please explain. Well, it's, it pretty well stipulates 7,000, okay, in Revelation chapter 11. Um, the pata is the Greek word, um, uh, arena, and uh, that's where it happens. But it, bear in mind all at the same time that seven means spiritual completeness. In other words, all of it. That's what God wants. I'm out of time. Hey, I love you all a bunch. Why? Do you enjoy studying God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse? Most important, God loves you for it. That's His letter that He's written to you. He wants you to read it with understanding. It will change your life. It gives you meaning and purpose. And it raises you up and it makes you so... It makes God's day. And when you make our Father's day, He's going to make yours. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless God. He will always bless you. Most important, this. You stay in that word every day in that word, even with trouble. It's a good day. You know why? Because Jesus is the living word.